My name is Vasil Kiko, I am a student of Lviv Polytechnic National University. And today I want to tell you about forest cover type classification. But let's start off general thing. What is tree? Tree is the one of the most important plants on planet. Trees are vital. As the biggest plants on the planet, they give us oxygen, store carbon, stabilize the soil and give life to the world's wildlife. They also provide us with the materials for tools and shelter. The canopies of trees act as a physical filter, trapping dust and absorbing pollutants from the air. Each individual tree removes up to 1.7 kilos every year. They also provide shade from solar radiation and reduce noise. But at the same time, the World Bank estimates that about 3.9 million square miles of forest have been lost since the beginning of the 20th century. In the past 25 years, forests shrunk by half million square miles, an area bigger than the size of South Africa. In 2018, The Guardian reported that every second, a chunk of forest equivalent to the size of a soccer field is lost. Often, deforestation occurs when forested area is cut and cleared to make way for agriculture or grazing. Natural fires in tropical forests tend to be rare but intense. Many forests are cleared to make way for palm oil plantations. In this uh, picture you can see uh, original forest cover and karst forest cover. And what about Ukraine? In Ukraine situation isn't good either. Many factors affect the situation. Thoughtless and uncontrolled deforestation, wildfires, droughts and tree diseases. As you can see on this picture in the left, uh, <coughs> in Ukraine there are only two areas which wooded cover is more than 40%. It's Carpathian forests and Polisia, known as woodlands. What about solution? This problem requires a comprehension solution it size government, scientists and society. Completely deal with it now isn't real, but we should try to reduce deforestation and prevent the situation of getting worse. And solution. There are different solutions. Government find volunteers, planting new trees, creating medicines for tree diseases and so on. But I was really engaged with new project that has been in development and uh, I have read about it recently. The idea of project consists of creating drones which will monitor forests and, in accordance, monitor the situation with trees in general. So I decided to take part in developing and work on machine learning algorithm part. My task. My task is to teach a model in that way so it will be able to predict what types of trees grow in an area based on the surrounding characteristics. So then the main system will be able to compare existing values or characteristics with predicted which tree should be there normally for fighting anomalies. Eventually, system will use that information for making a report and inform appropriate workers and instances. So start with data set. Predicting forest cover type from cartographic variables only, no remotely sensed data. The actual forest cover type for a given observation, 30 and 40 meter cell, was determined from US Forest Service Region 2 Resource Information System data. Independent variables were derived from data originally obtained from US Geological Survey and USFS data. Data is in raw form, not scaled, and contains binary 0 or 1 columns of data for qualitative independent variables. This study area includes four wilderness areas located in the Roosevelt National Forest of Northern Colorado. On this si slide, I here make a schedule with attribute name, attribute type, the measurement unit and a brief description. So, elevation is elevation in meters. Aspect is aspect in degrees azimuth. Slope is slope in degrees. Horizontal distance to hydrology, vertical distance to hydrology, and horizontal distance to roadways are known by themselves. On the next slide, I make some more attribute description. 
Heel shade 9 a.m. Heel shade noon. Heel shade 3 p.m. Uh, they are all uh, heel shade index at different day time. Horizontal distance to fire points means distance to nearest wildfire ignition points. Wilderness area and soil type are 44 binary columns, which means wildness area designation and soil type designation. And the last column is cover type, which means forest cover type designation. On this slide you can see a piece of data set. Now about algorithm. I uh, have determined some algorithms. First of them is k nearest neighbors. The KNN algorithm assumes that similar things exist in close proximity. In other words, similar things are near to each other. The advantages of KNN. The algorithm is simple and easy to implement. There is no need to build a model, tune several parameters, or make additional assumptions. And the algorithm is versatile. It can be used for classification, regression, and search. Now about disadvantages. The algorithm gets significantly slower at the number of examples and or predictors independent variables increase. Uh, in the left side, you can see the KNN algorithm step by step. Now about decision tree, another algorithm. Decision tree is the most powerful and popular tool for classification and prediction. A decision tree is a flowchart like tree structure. There each internal node denotes a test on an attribute, each branch represents an outcome of the test, and each leaf node holds a class label. Pros and cons. The strengths of decision tree methods are Decision tree are able to generate understandable rules, perform classification without requiring much computation, are able to handle both continuous and categorical variables, and provide a clear indication of which fields are most important for prediction or classification. And the weaknesses of decision tree methods. Decision trees are less appropriate for estimation tasks where the goal is to predict the value of a continuous attribute. They are prone to errors in classification problems with many class and relatively small number of training examples. And the last decision tree can be computationally expensive to train. Now about tools of implementation. I find two powerful tools, Python and R. Let's speak about their advantages and disadvantages. Start from Python. General purpose programming languages are useful beyond just data analysis. It has gained popularity for its code readability, speed, and many functionalities. It's great for mathematical computation and learning how algorithms work, and has high ease of deployment and reproducibility. And now er errors advantages. Widely considering the best tool for making beautiful graphs and visualizations. It has many functionalities for data analysis and great for statistical analysis. <coughs> I'm sorry. Built around a command line, but the majority of R users work inside of RStudio, an environment that includes a data editor, debugging support, and a window to hold graphics as well. Disadvantages. Python doesn't have as many libraries as R and there are no module replacements for the hundreds of essential R packages. Python requires rigorous testing as errors show up in runtime. Visualizations are more convoluted in Python than in R and the results are not as eye-pleasant or informative. And now R. For, for people with no software engineer experience, Base R can be more difficult to learn because it was developed by statisticians, not to make coding easier. But R has a set of packages known as the TDRs, which provides powerful yet easy to learn tools for importing, manipulating, visualizing, and reporting on data. Finding the right packages to use in R may be time consuming. There are many dependencies between R libraries. R can be considered slow if code is written poorly. Not as popular as Python for deep learning and NLP. That's all what I want to say to you today. Thanks for your attention.